We're in a business that it's multi-generation. I want to have everything here for my great-grandchildren. I don't want to see climate change destroy and have severe weather such that we don't know if we're going to have a crop one year and maybe two years later not have a crop again. Grape growing is a challenging venture. It's not for the faint of heart. Uh, grape growing is no different than any other type of farming. But when it comes to things like climate change, they talk about grapes being the canary in the coal mine. It's a $9 billion industry in Canada, the grape and wine sector, and so it's very, very important. Normally when you're tasting wines, you will taste a uh, red wine first. You take a small amount, you give it a swirl. We're a family-owned winery. Smell the nose. We are about the 10th largest producer of VQA wine in Canada, and that's 100% Canadian grapes that go into the bottle. So it is a major draw to the economy. There's two and a half million people that just visit this little tiny town of 15,000 people a year, and they're coming to wine country. We're in a very unique climatic zone in Niagara and the Lake. 70% of all the grapes in Ontario are grown in this little area here. This is, yeah, this is red, it's uh, Syrah. I grew up not far from here in Niagara Falls, Ontario. My dad made wine with all the Italian and European neighbors. And so I've always had an interest in wine. And um, once I started learning more about plant biology, I really got hooked into viticulture specifically. And it's right in my own backyard. And I'm fortunate to be up rock right where I grew up. Grapes are a good indicator of climate change because they're very sensitive to environmental changes. And where we're seeing climate change right now is more that extreme weather. Whether it's polar vortex, where we have long periods of cold, or just really wonky weather, where we can have really, really dry conditions, followed by just extreme rains or hail in systems that we don't normally see. This one, it, it will never ripen. When we first started, we had weather that we could count on like a clock. More recently, in the last 20 years, we're seeing these extremes. Climate change is happening, and there's severities of weather. So we might have a more moderate winter, but when the cold weather hits, it hits hard. And what's really bizarre is we've had what's been called a polar vortex. And that is a really serious concern for us. My family has been here for, for 235 years. And we're starting to see severities that my father and grandfather have not seen. We've adapted to what we know right now, and the researchers are helping us to say, what do we do next? Climate change is definitely a threat to the industry, and farming practices will have to adapt. And the number one tool is probably going to be plant material and new technologies such as monitoring hardiness in the plants themselves. Here at Brock University at the Cool Climate Enology and Viticulture Institute, or known as COVI, we're looking at old hardiness of grapevines to see how they respond to, to the weather. What we're finding is that grapevines don't have a similar response from year to year. So what we've developed is a research tool, but also an outreach tool to the grape and wine industry so they can help protect their vineyards using this information in a close to real time manner. One of the tools that we need is the research scientists at Covey, a university fully focused on what we're doing here to make this billion dollar industry adapt to these changes to have continued success. They're invaluable. We work hand in hand. What we do is we take the buds off of the cane, we put them onto these trays. We put the trays into this freezer system and we basically mimic a freeze situation. Basically the water is freezing within the cell. It's just like when you have a, a water bottle and you leave it in your car over the winter and it just, it breaks. And so it essentially kills the entire bud. Every few seconds data is being collected from each one of those trays, each one of those cells. And then we use that to, to help determine what the, what the critical temperatures are at a given date for a particular variety at a particular location. And we put all of this information on, on the web and available to the grape and wine industry so they can help protect their vineyards. In Ontario, about half of the industry 
is protected with what we call wind machines. This uh, wind machine moderates our temperature. It changes the temperature by about four to five degrees Celsius. And four or five degrees Celsius means the difference of having a fruit crop or not having a fruit crop. What it does is it draws the warm air from up above, pushes down toward the ground, pushes the cold air up and creates that circulation. At any given moment, they can see how cold hardy their vines are. And then they can look at the weather forecast or we send alerts to the industry to tell them when to turn on their machines. All we have to do is miss one of those times and we've lost our crop. At Brock University, they're testing 14 different locations across the Niagara Peninsula, so we know when to turn the wind machines on. Since the development of this program, as well as the influx of wind machine technology, we have seen a huge reduction in winter damage, and it has saved the industry millions of dollars. Climate change is occurring all the time, so we need to adapt to those changes. One of the first stages was the wind machines. And now we're buffering our risk to climate change by increasing the amount of wines we produce and what we store per year. We built this new facility, we got all these tanks, and um, we're going to carry double the inventory. That way, if we lose a crop, um, we will have sufficient supply not to impact our markets. We're planning these things for my kids and my grandkids. We, we've adapted change so that when they come up and get involved in the business, we've made changes that'll protect their future.